It is my belief that so many golfers are using clubs which are simply too hard to hit. Having good irons which are forgiving and easy to hit quite simply make this game so much more enjoyable. I have got two amazing sets to show you which are gonna help add that extra bit of forgiveness. And then I've got one set which I think is absolutely fantastic, but may surprise you and make you a little bit physically ill. So first up, we have the Stealth Irons from TaylorMade. Now, like a lot of people, when these irons came out, I was pretty thoroughly underwhelmed. I mean, it kind of got lost in all the launch and all the hype about the driver. Go on there. Go on there. Go on there. Go on. Go, on. go, go, go. Done. <laughs> Now, the biggest talking point about this driver was this cap back design. Basically, they've scooped out a chunk of the toe, replaced it with carbon, and then they've repositioned the weight a little bit lower in the head to get the ball launching higher and to make it a little bit more forgiving. Oh my word, those two are just absolutely tracking down the flag. These are, legit, these are legitimately my first two swings of the day. My first two swings of the day. Now, they represent a step up from the Sim 2, but Again, it wasn't anything too exciting when they came out, but then I started using them. I started hitting them. It just absolutely explodes off the face. Those three shots to start with though, by the way. All right, isn't it? Finai, what's that, what's that Kieran? It's a sign of quality ball striking. Or, as it happens, that one was struck from there, low and thin. So these irons are very much what I would call a modern loft. This is an A-time, but I'll throw up the spec sheet of the Stealth, and this is something you're gonna see in most of the forgiving irons. Nowadays, very low lofts, and yet the ball is launching super, super high with a low spin. I mean, I'm 180 yards here from the green. Got an A-time, and I honestly don't think I'm gonna to have to hit this full. I'm just gonna do a nice, smooth, Monty swing. Like, I honestly might put these in the bag. Go in the hole. It's almost cleared the green. It's almost cleared the green. That's probably gone about 190 yards. It shouldn't be a surprise though, because these irons have the inverted cone technology that TaylorMade use on their drivers. They've got this speed pocket, which is just behind the club face, which helps it flex. These are rockets. So these stealths would set you back 729 pounds. We will convert that into dollars, and that's just from a quick internet search, but that's only from five to pitch you made, so six irons. So they are top end of the market. But if you want an iron that just explodes off the face, I'm gonna to have to take so much off this. So yes, they're super powerful. If you want an iron which is gonna spin loads, these aren't gonna be the ones. However, they're also great on off-center strikes. So that was a nice little three-quarter swing, that. Go on, kick off that bunker, feed round. Ah, oh. honestly, as mentioned, when these irons came out, wasn't excited. Now, they are. Brilliant. Now flying so far under the radar, they also could be considered stealth. We have the Cobra LTDX irons. I'm not sure I've ever known a release go so unnoticed than these irons. But again, they're absolutely brilliant. Now Cobra have once again dipped into using their 3D printing machine by stripping out a lot of material from the back and again repositioning that. They've actually put a lot of weight in the heel and then a lot of weight in the toe, you can see by this screw which is appearing out of the end here. This is all about maximizing forgiveness, pushing weight to the outside and increasing MOI, which we will get into. I'd say the Stealth probably look a little bit sleeker. These are a little bit more bulbous and it's got a milled face that really, it kind of pops out, it's very, very noticeable. I definitely, definitely need bigger irons, don't I? I definitely need bigger irons. I'm not, I'm not Mr. Green yet. So again, I'll throw up the specs of these irons just to show you the lofts. You can pause and screenshot now if you really want to get down into the details. Oh, I might have Mr. Green. I might have Mr. Green. I might have missed it. Miles away. Take back everything I've ever said. So they do come in slightly cheaper. <laughs> I think I do prefer the feel of these. Go on, feed right, feed right. Oh. They just feel a little bit softer off the face. They feel like they would spin more. I'd obviously have to put that to the test. But before I reveal what I think are the most forgiving irons that you can buy right now, let's head back to the studio and let me just explain what it takes to actually make a very forgiving golf club. 
With forgiving irons, size matters. Generally, the bigger the club head, the more forgiving it's going to be. This is why you see so many golfers switch their long irons for something like a hybrid. Because of the extra size of this club, the engineers can push weight to the extremities and actually offer more forgiveness. So this is a Phaser XR2 iron. We did a comparison review on this club a while ago. I'll throw up the link to the video here, but you can see it's got this huge sole. It's got this big bit scooped out of the back of the head. So what that does, that creates a cavity here, but it allows the weight to be pushed towards the toe and towards the heel. And when the weight is pushed to the extremities of the club, that increases something called moment of inertia. Now, moment of inertia is basically resistance to twisting on toe and heel strikes. So when a big cavity back like this hits the toe, the club is going to twist. But if it's a very forgiving club, it simply won't deflect and twist as much giving the ball a little bit more speed and accuracy. Now, let me give you an example of what happens when I hit a really bladed club. So I'm gonna hit Tiger's irons, and then I'm gonna compare it to the stealth that we've already spoken about from heel and toe strikes. So Tiger Woods's irons, not the most unforgiving iron in the world, but pretty close. So this is the polar opposite of the stealth. Very, very, very small head. Gotta strike it out of the middle to get the benefits that you want. So what I'm gonna do is hit shots both with the Tiger Iron and the Stealth in an eight iron. Try and strike him towards the toe and then show you the difference in performance. So this Tiger Iron behind the ball, I must admit it does look absolutely gorgeous. Shame to strike it out of the toe, but needs must. Oh, yeah, it just feels like the whole club head is just kind of twisting when you hit. I mean, I've only set the distance here to 150 yards, but still it's like not carrying anywhere near that. Oh, not the kind of shot you want to be hitting on a cold morning. All right, stealth iron. That was again, struck very much from the toe, but the feeling was completely different. Actually felt like it was going. It felt like I still had some ball speed. You get a nice little draw with it. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the results. I managed to get the strikes pretty consistently out of the toe. In fact, I'd probably say the stealth on average, I was hitting even more out of the toe, which makes these results, although not surprising, very understandable when we're talking about the most forgiving irons video. So dynamic loft on the stealth was coming out much lower. And I'll actually throw up both the stealth and the Tiger Woods iron loss here in the eight iron. You can see there's quite a big difference there. So you would expect the stealth to be going further. It felt so much better from the toe. It really, really did. The Tiger iron just felt like it was twisting away and I was losing all the feel and the distance. Whereas the stealth still felt like I was actually getting some decent distance on the ball. The swing speeds were very similar at 86 miles an hour. But the ball speed difference, 104.9 for the Tiger Iron and 109.5 for the Stealth. A little bit less backspin with the Stealth Iron and a lower launch, which could be down to the dynamic loft, but also carry distances. So 141 with the Tiger Iron and 151 with the Stealth. And this is the difference that you can have if you go for a more forgiving iron. So ladies and gentlemen, my choice for the most forgiving iron of this year I must warn you not to scream. It is the Wilson launch pad. Now, first of all, I must apologize. I know a few of you may have just seen your dinner for the second time because they are really that ugly, but it is not the look that I'm bothered about with this club. It is about the forgiveness and it is about the performance. And this might interest you. It's also about the price because these are significantly cheaper than the other two sets. Coming in at 500, and 69 pounds. I've also got these in graphite shafts, but that's just an added extra. Oh, come off the slope, go on, bounce in. Go on. Oh, don't stay there. Now, when you put these clubs behind the ball, they are just like hybrids, basically. And while they might not be the best looking, they are more forgiving than Mary Poppins on kite day. And they just fly. Oh my word, look at that. That is massive. Hello, go in, go in. Ooh. 
That flew so far. How? I pulled my five iron out. I reckon we 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 must be two two ten two twenty two hundred and ten yards. Prize to Kieran with his super duper eyes. I'm going to try and get there with the seven once more. I'm going to throw up the specs of these irons, and I've got to be honest. <laughs> These are maybe my favorite for a couple of reasons, but one of the main ones is just, it's so simple. It's a hollow headed construction. The weight is shoved out to the boundaries and it just flies off the face from the heel to the toe, the bottom to the top and can a muscle of seven in there, come on. Oh, it's a bit thin, it's cutting. Back edge of the green, I thinned the absolute arse out of that. Cut back a touch, kick off the bank. Look at that, man. It's a seven iron. It has absolutely no right going that far. You can see here just how wide this sole is. Now this is gonna help skid that club along the surface. It's gonna help it move out of the ground as well if you start to hit it a little bit chunky. The top line is undoubtedly thick, and even being that thick, on the longer eyes, it does not hide the big bum which sits behind. Now, Wilson have launched launch pad irons before, and you're not gonna believe me, but they were even worse looking than these. I've got a wedge here from a 150 yards. That was a bit thin. Oh, sit, what, well, spun? Oh, don't go in the ravine. Could be arse walking down there today. <laughs> Like go in the hole. Oh, go on, do it, do it, do it. Now both those are actually quite thin. That second one was struck a tiny bit better, but what an evening though. What an evening, beautiful and warm. Spring is in the air. <laughs> go on then. <laughs> Get down to those comments as well, let us know what are your favorite forgiving irons? Because this isn't obviously an exhaustive list. Oh, why, why, am I, why, am I, why am I using plates? Why am I even bothering? Why don't I have 5.5 regular even flow graphite shafts with launch pad Wilson irons? Why don't I do it? Why don't I do it? Don't I? I should probably do it. 